Good day, everyone! I am Kathleen Claire Abad, but you can call me Kat na lang for short. So for today, we will be discussing the introduction to child and adolescent development. So let's start! First, what is child development? So these are the biological, psychological, and emotional changes that occur between birth and end of adolescence. So nangyayari ito as the individual progresses from a state of dependency to increasing autonomy. So kung halimbawa, before, nung bata pa tayo, baby pa, lagi tayong nakaasa sa magulang natin kasi hindi pa natin alam yung mga bagay-bagay sa mundo, ba? Diba? But as we grow older, as we mature, we soon learn to do things on our own. So in turn, nagiging independent tayo slowly but surely. Also, child development is a continuous process with a predictable sequence but has a unique course for every child. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pare-pareho sa bawat bata. Kumbaga, meron lang tayong guide na, oops, itong milestone na to, we need to reach this by age like this, ba? Diba? Pero hindi siya final. Kumbaga, pag applicable kay Pedro, hindi ibig sabihin applicable din kay Juan at kay Maria. Alright? So, sabi nga natin, it does not progress at the same rate. And each stage is affected by a preceding type of development. So kung halimbawa, medyo late kang natutong magsalita. Consequently, baka late ka din matutong magsulat. Why? Kasi mas mauuna ka dapat matutong magsalita before ka makapagsulat. So kumbaga, uh, preceding is yung pagsasalita and yung susunod na skill na matututunan mo which is yung pagsusulat is na delay din kung baga uh, domino effect siya okay so interest in the child development field began in the 20th century so it started with abnormal behaviors that do not conform to standard behavior taught and expected by the society from children so no may na observe sila na mga different babies ayan different children kung baga hindi sila yung parang normal na bakit medyo delayed, medyo advanced. So, they started to be curious. Bakit kaya ganon? So, those are the reasons kung bakit nagsimula yung interest dito sa field of child development. So, eventually, the focus of research, especially in the field of education, ay napunta sa development of children as well as sa factors that have influence on development. So, this was done in order to transform the classroom and the learning process from teacher-centered to learner or student-centered. Before kasi, nung teacher-centered pa, ibig sabihin, si teacher lang ang source of info, siya lang ang magsasalita, ang students ay pawang tagapakinig lamang. But now that we are moving to a student-centered uh, learning process or learner-centered nga tinatawag, ang students ay nagiging active. Kumbaga, they are active participants in the learning process and they also share information with the teacher and with their peers. Ayan. Okay? So, we have four concepts of child development. We have the child, adolescent, growth, and development. So, iisa-isa natin ito so that we can understand better ano nga ba itong Uh, child, Adolescent, Growth, and Development. Alright? So, first we have the child. So, this is defined as a young person below the age of puberty and legal maturity. Also, according to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child, this is a person below the age of 18 unless laws of a particular country set the legal age for adulthood younger. So, halimbawa, dito sa Pilipinas, ang legal age sa atin, or kumbaga, hindi ka na minor, once you turn 18. Same in the US, ganun din. 18 din yung kanilang uh, age of legal maturity. However, sa ibang bansa, it can be younger or older. Depende sa uh, naset sa kanila. Okay? Childhood is the period between birth and adolescence. Kumbaga, mula nung pinanganak ka, tapos, before ka mag, uh, maging teenager or maging adolescent, 
yun yung childhood mo. Yun natin natawag. So, that is the period between birth and adolescence. So, next, we have adolescent or teenager. Nanggaling ito sa Latin word na adolescere, which means to grow into maturity. So, adolescent is a person that is developing or turning into the age of maturity. So, ang adolescence naman is the period between childhood and adulthood. So, you are no longer a child, but you are not yet an adult. Yan yan. Okay, next, we have growth. So, this is the progressive increase and continuous advancement of child from birth to maturity. It is also characterized by increment in body tissues, organs, and structures. Halimbawa nito is yung mga physical changes that our bodies undergo during puberty. Ayan. It should not be confused with maturation, which is part of development that is controlled from within the internal growth. Also, maturation consists chiefly of structural changes and development of mental functions, which is indicated by a state of readiness to engage in a definite type of behavior, or that growth has reached its optimal level. Alright? And last, we have development. This is the gradual and orderly unfolding of characteristics of individuals as they go through successive stages of growth. It also implies increasingly progressive maturity of behavior and organization of personality and character. So now na alam na natin kung ano yung four concepts of child development, let's go now sa mismong topic natin which is child and adolescent growth and development. So ano ba ito? This is the study of physical, physiological, cognitive, and social changes as well as the factors that influence these changes that children experience and go through from birth to adulthood. It also studies kung paano nag-grow, nag-learn, at nag-change over time ang mga children. So, understanding of child development is essential. Bakit? Kasi it allows us to fully appreciate the cognitive, emotional, physical, social, and educational growth the children go through. So, ito po yung tatandaan natin every time, alright? Importante kasi ito. So, now we move on to the theories of human development. So, ano ba yung mga theories na ito? These provide a framework for thinking about human growth, development, and learning, and it also deals with change over time. Kumbaga, Sabi nga natin, human development is a complex process. Hindi yan yung uh, mafit lang sa isang box. Hindi siya one size fits all na pag pwede kay ganito, pwede kay ganyan, pwede sa lahat. It's not like that. These theories enable us to have a better and more accurate understanding kung ano nga ba yung nature at conditions ng human development. So, these are also usually concerned with changes over time within an area or several areas, as well as the changes among areas of development and the explanation for these changes. So, meron tayong 13 na theories that will be discussed. Okay? So, isa-isayin lang natin for now. First, meron tayong maturationist perspective. Second is the psychodynamic perspective. Third is the constructivist perspective. Fourth, cognitive developmental perspective. Fifth, behaviorist or environmentalist theories. Sixth, evolutionary perspective. Seventh, information processing perspective. Eighth, sociocultural perspectives. Ninth, developmental or ecological system perspectives. Tenth, lifespan perspectives. Eleventh, Humanist perspective, 12th, ethological theory perspective, and last is the multiple intelligences theory. So, medyo madami. So, simulan na natin kay maturationist perspective. So, this is also known as the maturational theory, which was developed by Arnold Jessel in 1925. So, sabi niya, 
development is a biological process that occurs automatically in predictable, sequential stages over time. So, from a maturationist perspective, kahit daw wala tayong gawin to improve ourselves, kahit hindi tayo i-guide ng ating mga parents, ng ating mga teachers, our minds and bodies develop automatically as we age. So, kumbaga, for them, age is equal to maturity. Yeah. Okay? This is based on three assumptions. First, development has biological basis. Pag sinabi nating biological basis, a child's development is dahil sa kagagawan ng genes na meron ang isang tao. In layman's term, ibig sabihin walang kinalaman ang environment ng bata or kung sino man yung nag-guide sa bata. It's purely the genes. Yun lang ang uh, basis niya of development. Next, good and bad years alternate. Kumbaga, sa kanila, it's part of the natural sequence of development na halinhinan ang good and bad years. Diba for parents, meron tayong mga tinatawag na terrible twos, ganyan. So, based on maturationist perspective, this is part of the process. Natural yun. And last, we have body types are correlated with personality development. May sinusundan silang basihan na if your body type is like this, then malamang ganito yung personality mo. Something like that. Okay, so next, we move on sa psychodynamic perspective or what is also known as the object relations theory. This was developed by Sigmund Freud in the late 1880s and sinasabi niya dito, it is concerned with how people understand and represent their relationships with other people. Kaya siya tinawag na object relations theory kasi yung object, representations of people yan. Kumbaga, how are they remembered by certain people? Okay? Also, meron tayong term dito sa psychodynamic perspective which is the transference. This means that people's early relationships often set the tone that later relationships will take. So, kung halimbawa, nung bata ka, naka-encounter ka ng mga tao na hindi naging totoong kaibigan sa'yo, kumbaga, binakstab ka, and so on, your past experience may lead you to become distrustful of the people who would want to pursue a relationship with you later in life. Kumbaga, parang nadala ka na kasi. There is a very high chance that hindi ka na madaling magtiwala sa tao and you are very much wary of their intentions sa'yo. Third is the constructivist or integrationist perspective. This was advanced by the following theorists, John Piaget, Maria Montessori, and Lev Vygotsky. So, sabi nila, learning and development occur when young people interact with the environment and the people around them. Kumbaga, mas natututo daw ang mga bata when we let them become active participants in the learning process, meaning the learners initiate most activities na kinakailangan nila para ma-acquire ang isang particular knowledge or skill. Fourth, we have the cognitive developmental perspective. Ito naman ay dinevelop ni John Piaget. So, it is important to note na si John Piaget ang unang-unang nagsabi na children play an active role in gaining knowledge of the world. Kinoin din niya yung children as little scientists. Bakit? Kasi they actively construct their knowledge and understanding of their world. So, that is according to him. Meron din siyang dinevelop or prinopose na four distinct stages of intellectual development. So, we have the sensory motor stage, which spans from birth to 2 years old. Next is the pre-operational stage from 2 to 7 years old naman ito. And is, we have the concrete operational stage from 7 to 11 years old. And last, we have the formal operation stage from adolescence to adulthood naman. Fifth, we have the behaviorist or environmentalist theories. This was based upon the theories of the following, John Watson, Ivan Pavlov, and B.F. Skinner. It focuses on how environmental interaction influences behavior, 
Pero dapat inote natin that it only deals with observable behaviors. Ibig sabihin yung nakikita lang. It does not give consideration sa mga internal thoughts and feelings. So yun yung pinagkaiba niya from other child development theories. Kasi yung mga nakikita lang natin, mga na-observe lang natin, yun lang yung dinideal with nitong theories na ito. Sixth, we have the evolutionary perspective. So this is an application of basic principles of Darwinian evolution, particularly natural selection to explain contemporary development. It theorizes that child's behavior and personality may be reflected by the basic will to survive and be reproductive. Seventh is the information processing perspectives. This emerged in 1950s and in equate the nila yung brain to a neural computer that processes info with extraordinary efficiency and excellent performance in problem solving and critical thinking through a process increasingly enhanced over time. So, brain is equal to neural computer for IP theorist or information processing theorist. This was based on the idea that humans process info that they receive rather than merely responding to stimuli. Kumbaga, nag-iisip tayo, pinaprocess natin yung info that we receive, hindi lang tayo basta reactive lang. Okay? Also, for IP perspective, according to IP perspective, human learning is a development of networked memory structures. Eighth is the sociocultural perspectives, which was developed by Lev Vygotsky. So, according to him, Every function in a child's cultural development appears twice. Una, sa social level. So, this is between people or yung tinatawag natin inter-psychological. Second is the individual level, which is done or nangyayari sa inside the child or sa loob ng isang bata. This is known as intra-psychological naman. We also have a term that we use in sociocultural perspectives which is the zone of proximal development. Kasi meron tayong actual development level at meron tayong level of potential development. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong yung totoong nangyayari, yung actual, real-time na nangyayari na development ng isang bata at yung target. So, between that, yung target at saka yung actual, yun yung tinatawag natin zone of proximal development. Yung distance na yun, yung ZPD. It includes all knowledge and skills that a person cannot yet understand or perform on their own, but is capable of learning with guidance. So, sabi nga natin, mabalik tayo. Yung actual development level, ito yung na mga bagay na nagagawa na ni child, okay? Yung level of potential development, ito yung pwede niyang gawin, pero hindi pa niya kaya sa ngayon. So, yung ZPD, ito yung hindi pa niya kaya sa ngayon, Pero, with proper guidance, kakayanin niya in the future. So, kumbaga, yun yung potential niya. Alright? Ninth, we have the developmental or ecological system perspectives. This was developed by Yuri Bronfenbrenner. Ang sabi niya, a person's development is affected by everything in their surrounding environment. So, meron siyang linist na five levels of a person's environment. We have the microsystem, mesosystem, exosystem, macrosystem, and chronosystem. So don't worry, iisahisahin naman natin ito. So first is the microsystem. Ito yung immediate environment ng isang bata. These are the institutions and groups that most immediately and directly impact a child's development and learning. Kumbaga, ito talaga yung nakakahalubilo niya in his or her daily life. Example, family niya, peers, school, religious institutions, and yung neighborhood niya. Next is the mesosystem. These are the interconnections or relationships between microsystem. Halimbawa, interaction between family and teacher, or kaya peers and family relations. Diba? Next, we have the exosystem. This involves links between a social setting in which the individual does not have an active role 
and the individual's immediate context. Ano kaya ito? Halimbawa, yung parents' promotion. This depends upon the family dynamic, first and foremost. Kasi lang kung halimbawa, ang parents' relationship with each other is medyo on rocky ground, this may result in increased conflict with the other parent and possibly change patterns of interaction with the child. So, it is also important to note that exosystem is also known as indirect environment. Fourth, we have the macrosystem. It describes culture in which individuals live, and this evolves over time because each successive generation ay pwede magbago nito. Kasi sabi nga natin, culture. Over time, culture really develops. Diba? nag evolve yan, nag-iiba yan. So, when we say cultural context, Kasama dito yung child, yung parents, yung school, yung workplace ng parents. All these are part of cultural context. It also includes yung mga developing and industrialized countries, socioeconomic status, poverty, and ethnicity. And last but not the least, we have the chronos system. Ito yung pinakamalayo na. These are the patterning of environmental events and transitions over the life course as well as socio-historical circumstances. So, halimbawa of transitions, divorce, okay? Sabi nila, a year after the divorce, ito daw yung peak ng mga kaguluhan sa buhay pamilya. Ayan. Medyo negative yung effects sa child. Medyo siguro mga nagre-rebelde. Ayan. So, kumbaga, dun nila na-feel yung effects talaga ng divorce. But after two years, medyo humuhupa na yung conflict within the family. And slowly, na-stabilize na din yung relationship nila with each other. Sa example naman ng socio-historical circumstances is yung higher career opportunities for women which had increased during the last 30 years. Tenth is the lifespan perspective. This was proposed naman by Paul Baltes. Sabi niya, development begins at conception and continues until death. Basically, sa buong buhay ng isang tao, he or she continues to develop in all aspects of his humanity. Habang buhay siya natututo at nag-grow into his or her own potential. Alright? And eleventh, we have the humanist perspective. This was developed by Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow. So, sabi nila, or sinasuggest nila, that self-actualization is the primary goal in life. So, ano ba itong self-actualization na ito? This is a state of self-fulfillment in which people achieve their highest potential in their own unique way. Kumbaga, pag naabot to, ito yung main goal ko in life. Self-actualization na reach ko yon, kasi... Fulfilled ako. Nagawa ko yung purpose in life ko. So, it's like that. Also, according to this approach, each individual has the ability and motivation to reach more advanced levels of maturity and that people naturally seek to reach their own full potential. So, this perspective emphasizes the concept of free will. Okay? means hindi tayo nag-rely sa mga societal standards. Alright? Twelfth is the ethological theory perspectives. Ito naman ay dinevelop ni Conrad Lawrence. And it stresses that behavior is strongly influenced by biology, is tied to evolution, and is characterized by critical or sensitive periods. So, ano ba itong critical or sensitive periods na tinatawag? This means that the presence or absence of certain experiences has a long-lasting or pangmatagalang influence sa isang individual. Also, under ethological theory perspectives, meron tayong tinatawag na imprinting. Okay? This is the rapid innate learning that involves attachment to the first moving object that is seen. Kung baga halimbawa, pinanganak yung bata. Kung sino ang una niya makita once na nagmulat siya ng kanyang mga mata, yun yung parang tingin niya nanay niya. Bakit? Kasi parang once they open their eyes, they see this person, kahit hindi siya yung nanay, basta siya yung unang nakita. Parang nagkakaroon sila ng attachment to that person. 
yun yung imprinting. Kasi yun yung una nilang nakita at yun yung unang nag-register or na-recognize ng kanilang brain. And last but not the least, we have the multiple intelligences theory. So this was developed by Howard Gardner. This contradicts the idea na ang intelligence can only be measured using IQ or yung intelligence quotient. Kumbaga, ang gusto niyang patunayan is, iba-iba ang klase ng intelligence ng tao. Hindi lang yan bookish intelligence na, oops, madami tong alam, maalam to, matalino to. No, it's not like that. Meron tayong nine na intelligences na pre-post ni Gardner. So, these are verbal linguistic, logical, mathematical, spatial visual, bodily kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, interpersonal, naturalist, and existential. So, when we say verbal linguistic, ito yung mga well-developed ang verbal skills and sensitivity to sounds, meanings, and rhythms of words. Now, when we say logical, mathematical, ito naman yung ability to think conceptually and abstractly. Also, meron din silang capacity to discern logical and numerical patterns. Ito yung mga matematisya na mahilig sa numbers. Next is the spatial visual. These have the capacity to think in images and pictures and to visualize accurately and abstractly. Sila yung magaling mag-imagine. Okay? Kahit sabihin mo pa lang na visualize na nila, ay, ganito pala yung itsura niyan. Ito yung gusto niya sabihin. Or gusto niyang i-paint na picture sa mind ko. Next is the bodily kinesthetic. This is the ability to control one's body movements and to handle objects skillfully. And next is the musical. This is the ability to produce and appreciate rhythm pitch and timber. Ito yung mga mahilig sa music, mahilig mag-instruments. Ayan. Sixth is interpersonal. These people have the capacity to detect and respond appropriately to the moods, motivations, and desires of others. Ito yung magaling makisama people, person, kung baga tinatawagan natin. Next, we have intrapersonal. So, kung kanina, interpersonal with other people, kung maga nakikisama ka with other people, next naman, intrapersonal, ito yung kilala mo mismo yung sarili mo. You are in tune. You are self-aware and in tune with inner feelings, values, beliefs, and thinking processes. It is the naturalist. This is the ability to recognize and categorize plants, animals, and other objects in nature. And lastly, we have the existential. Ito yung mga may sensitivity and capacity to tackle deep questions about human existence. So, halimbawa nito mga questions na to ay, what is the meaning of life? Okay. Why do we die? And how did we get here? Alright. So, parang iniisip natin, paano nga ba, ano ba yung meaning ng buhay? Ano ba yung purpose natin dito? Bakit tayo napunta dito? Yung mga ganon. And that ends our introduction to child and adolescent development. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope that you learned a lot from this lesson. I'll see you in our next module. Thank you!